Geralt of Rivia here with Rhyme Signatures, the nerdiest music review of this side of being cautious of old men in a profession where men usually die young. And today we are going to be doing a review of the new Riverside album, ID Entity. Was it long to stick your head in the sand to choose anywhere else? I have nothing to hide, you say. It's all okay and fine. Here it is, folks. 2023 season has officially begun. As early on, we have a release from one of my favourite prog bands, Riverside. Hooray! It's safe to say, at this point, the band has basically achieved legendary status within the progressive metal world. No mean feat, considering that they've only been around for just over 20 years. And with ID Entity, we have their eighth full-length studio release. Now, they've not been as prolific as some bands, especially when you consider that contemporaries like Taken and Leprous, who've both been around since about 2010-ish, and have either seven albums out right now, or are releasing their seventh album in a couple of months, but Riverside have still been able to eke out a respectable number of records over the course of their life as a band. Consistency is the name of the game with Riverside, being one of those few bands who I would consider have never really put out a objectively bad record. Simply that, you know, some of them aren't quite as grand or epic in scope as others, but the idea of a band somehow doing better than Second Life Syndrome or Anno Domini High Definition is frankly laughable. You can't do better than perfect after all. They've not been without their share of tragedy, however, though, as sadly the band lost their main guitarist Piotr Grzynski back in 2016 to a pulmonary embolism. But despite this loss, they carried on going as a band, putting out their 2018 album Wasteland without him, with the rest of the band sort of picking up the six-string duties where needed. It was an interesting, reflective album, clearly written in the time of mourning, which felt like it was carried through the blood of the songwriting and made for a somewhat sobering listening experience at times, especially with tracks like River Down Below and Lament. So it's been five years since Wasteland, and the band has acquired a new guitarist in the Watch Me Butcher the Pronunciation, Mac Age Mello? Probably wrong, but you know. Who has no amount of uh, significant shoes to fill, and we'll touch on how he handles the job later in the review. So how has the band evolved since Wasteland? What kind of record is this? Look, I'm going to be honest with you all, I was nervous going into this one, as I often am when a band that's been so consistently good is putting something new out. Because Pessimistic Mind here is always convinced that the new record's going to be the Abacab or Saint Anger. And I was especially nervous with ID Entity when I saw that the lyrical focus was going to be on how the internet is scary and social media will eat your children. Stop all the downloading and get off TikTok, you damn kids. It always gives me a certain, oh goody, grandpa's yelling at the sky again, sense of dread. And despite how much confidence I generally have with Riverside, I was still sweating at the prospect of Duda complaining about Facebook alert tones and Snapchat filters. Fortunately, my fears have been assuaged, as while on paper the lyrics can be quite cringe in places, Duda's delivery is done in such a fashion that you can buy into them. They feel convincing and relatable rather than forced and embarrassing, which genuinely gives credit to just how good of a vocalist and lyricist he really is. So, let's take a bit of a rundown of the tracks on here. Let's get a feel for just what it is that's going on with ID Entity. The record kicks off with Friend or Foe, and we're immediately struck with a powerful synth riff, which has some really great 80s vibes. It kind of feels a bit like Depeche Mode on a lazy evening by a Miami beach at times. Duda's vocals are as strong as ever, and it immediately takes me back to when I first started listening to the band, and why I consider him to be one of the best and most distinctive voices in modern prog. There's some brilliant drum work, catchy riffing from both New Blood Meller and veteran Duda, with a fantastic driving beat to the entire song. This honestly works really well as an opener. It's hooky, attention-grabbing, and it gives the listener a fantastic idea of just what River Sound sounds like in 2023. The only moment of criticism is I unironically thought some of the lyrics were referencing copium. And I had to do a real quick Google search to make sure that wasn't the case, as I was about ready to burn my computer to the ground. Fortunately, the lyric in question is copy of it. The outro bass line is especially good, and works really well in tandem with the eerie-sounding melancholic synth that plays over the top of it. My attention was well and truly earned at this point. I keep coming back to this one, and it seems to just get better and better every time I listen to it. Second track, Landmine Blast, opens off with this great off-kilter, kind of a toolish and attention-grabbing riff. 
And it isn't long before we get some nice Pink Floydian sounding melodies rising in over this before that weird but oddly catchy main riff hammers back in. The bass work throughout the song and honestly on the album in general really is demanding and excellent. There's this working in of a staccato riff over these sort of a accusatory vocals. The instrumentation on this track is nicely jarring and angular but it really works well. There's some sort of kind of weird sort of semi-spoken word sections which are normally my first path to jumping off the boat but here they're actually pretty good. There's still a good sense of musicality to them and they don't hang around longer than is needed. Mello shows off how well he's settling in filling the void left by Piotr but while he's adapting himself well to the band's signature sound, it still feels like he's bringing something new. And he's been given the chance to really flex his own Ivy entity onto the record. <laughs> Third track, Big Tech Brother, is where things start to get really interesting for me. A somewhat embarrassing spoken machine intro asking you to read some terms and conditions notwithstanding. Seriously guys, you didn't need to do that bit. <laughs> the song swiftly leads into a killer bass and synth groove which carries on the feeling of the 80s vibe before this synth evolves into a sort of weird orchestrated cheesy B-movie sound. It's a nice melody though and after the initial shock wears off it completely fits the tone of the song and I honestly think it goes a large way to making the album sound fresh and experimental amidst the band's discography. There's a lot of songs on ID Entity that sound entirely new to a veteran fan but in an evolutionary way and progressive one rather than a regressive fashion. Heavier guitar grooves push forward and there's some really great organ sounds from the keys that give a kind of early to mid 90s dream theatre vibe for me. Duda's vocals are as haunting and mesmerising as ever. He has this way on the album of taking potentially cringe subject matter and making it sound fantastic. There are some brief bursts of aggression we've not heard in a while from him and it clearly shows a passion and fury at the forefront of some of these vocal deliveries. I do feel that this record shows Duda at his absolute best and is making me fall in love with him all over again. The track flows pretty beautifully really, with some big sweeping guitar solos and musical runs being the order of the day. Riverside have always flown the flag of deliberate and measured instrumentation over technical showiness and the same still rings true here. This song honestly feels like the sort of music I wish that Dream Theatre would have evolved into post Octavarium. And special mention I think has to be made to the outro synths on this track which I found particularly tasty. The fourth track, Post Truth, is probably what I would honestly consider to be the weakest song on the album. It's still good, but I just feel it lacks the more creative or ambitious side of the band that's so evident and well demonstrated on the rest of the songs. Synth is definitely the flavour of this album and this continues to be well proven on Post Truth. Quick keyboard intro breaks way into some crunchy guitars and Duda's vocals kick into gear fairly sharpish. I do feel though that this definitely should have been in contention for being one of the leading singles off the record as it does have that kind of immediacy and catchiness that you'd expect from that. It's still a little bit of a step down from the first three songs feeling quite safe and well trodden compared to what came before it. There's still space though in for a cracking keyboard solo and some masterful bass work which honestly comes as no surprise from the band at this point. There's also a particularly lovely piano outro too, which I feel deserves special mention as I keep replaying that part. It's just mm, lovely. At the heart of the album, of course, it's the epic, The Place Where I Belong, clocking in at just over 13 minutes in length. Gentle acoustic guitars accompany dude as heartfelt vocals before an enchanting synth comes in over the top of things, and the rest of the band kind of slowly start picking up the pace alongside this stripped down arrangement. A darker shade is slowly pulled over things though after the first couple of minutes, not feeling too dissimilar to something from a Stephen Wilson project. There's a fantastic punchy bass riff that lays down the foundations for the next part of the song, as well as some really nice sounding Hammond organ. The song almost feels like a swagger in the night. It's hard not to picture the band slowly emerging from a misty alleyway with the mood the music is evoking. There's again this uh, remarkable cynicism to the lyrics that like in earlier tracks could really easily just make you want to cringe but they make it work there's a wisdom and knowledge to the vocal delivery that just kind of stops it from being something you'd wince at which is pretty remarkable the song closes out with this wonderful ethereal sounding soundscape with some of the most tastefully composed arrangements i've heard from the band in recent years as mentioned earlier i love that riverside never feel the need to show off from a technicality point of view they let their excellent writing and demonstration of restraint dictate how they want a song to form, and it's always magnificent. Every element shines brightly on this final run. The bass, the keys, the guitars, the drums, 
nothing finding itself overly complex, but when taken together as a whole, it has this wonderful feeling of soaring through the air, carried on the wings of a band who just know how to write good music. Penultimate track, and I believe this was the lead single, could be wrong on that, uh, I'm Done With You, is rather tasty, leading in with a crunchy, distorted bass line that kind of reminds me of that time when Muse didn't completely suck. A punchy Hammond organ kicks in aggressively, signifying this is a much more attack-focused song than the one that preceded it. Judah's heavy cynicism can really be felt tangibly in the vocal delivery, giving the impression of a man facing down an aggressor or tormentor with whom they are finally done with. There's a driving synth and guitar riff on this one that is fantastic, catchy, memorable, and it fits the tone of the record perfectly. The chorus especially is loaded with venom, anger and spite, but it again dodges the cringe train to become something anthemic and relatable. As it feels, we've all been in the same situation where there's been someone in our lives that we've desperately needed to cut out of it. The album finishes off with the second longest track of Self Aware, which brings out these powerful, rocking 80s feeling guitar riffs to drive the song forward at a brisk pace, with the keyboards once again coming in to add effective highlights to the music. This has got a, a great classic rock and roll feeling, at times almost uh, hopeful and uplifting compared to the cynicism and anger from I'm Done With You. There's these flourishes part way through that give a bit of a reggae flavour to some of the songs too, with a kind of a funky, upbeat feeling, with some great bass lines. Lyrically, this feels like the band is encouraging us to cut up the deadwood of our lives, appreciate the good things and focus on being our best selves, which is honestly a very positive message to end on an otherwise cynical and frustrated album, lyrically at least. Synth has been such a blessing to the sound of this record, serving as a central and leading instrument at most points, and this final track is no exception to this, with a kind of darkened, almost cyberpunk-styled feeling as the track plays out to an intricate bass line with the darkening clouds of the keyboards slowly forming above. It is a really excellent way to play the record out, feeling almost cautionary in its mood, as if the band wants us to really remember the message they've given us over the course of the last 53 minutes. So, what else can I say about Riverside's ID Entity? I really kind of enjoyed this album, and not just because I've been jonesing for some new music since late November. This has felt like a much needed breath of fresh air in not only Riverside's impressive catalogue, but for modern prog in general. It's proven to me that you can take a touchy subject matter such as they have done and really make it work in the record's favour rather than to its detriment. It's far too early to say where this sits within the band's discography, though, in the grand scheme of things, but I definitely prefer this to 2018's Wasteland, and I really like that record. <laughs> Needless to say, though, Riverside have kicked off the Album of the Year race very early this year, and I look forward to seeing how everyone else rises to the challenge posed by the Polish Masters. This is a record I can thoroughly recommend that you buy digitally. This is all, of course, my opinion, as you know, so, if you have given this one a listen, tell me what you think of it down there. If there's uh, anything else coming out this year that you think I should keep my eye out for, you know, what's, what's, what's on your radar, effectively, let me know. I'll keep it on my list as well. If you like this video, please do share it with anyone who you think might enjoy it. Please do consider subscribing for more content. And if you really like what I do, please do also consider clicking the coffee link in my description down there. Until next time, guys, happy 2023, and keep your rhyme signatures odd.